Oh, uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, welcome everybody to the uh, December 2nd special uh, call meeting of the Solid Waste Subcommittee of the Public Works and Planning Commission. Uh, tonight we are going to uh, interview three uh, firms that have sent in uh, or answered, all answered our call to request for qualifications for a solid waste uh, transfer station or material handling system, whichever way you want to call it. There's a lot of buzzwords now in the industry to call the same thing, uh, uh, but for now we'll call it a transfer station. Uh, what, if, if you should have score sheets in front of you, there's a, there's a couple, they're all the same. I, I did one in case you don't like the first one, you can start over with the second one. There are more up on the well here if you wanna get a new clean copy. Uh, here's how we're gonna do this. Uh, we are gonna uh, bring in these firms one at a time. They have 45 minutes to go over the questions that were submitted to them and you may ask uh, questions or additional questions and comments to these firms, we will take a 10 minute break. But what I want you to do is I want you to score uh, these firms by the answers to these questions and answers to your questions on this score sheet from one through five, with five being the highest or the best. So at the end of the, end of the evening, the one with the most points in the column would be our number one choice. Does that make sense? So if you love somebody, they rate a four or five. If they do not impress you, they would be a zero or a one or a two. Does that make sense? Everybody clear on the scoring? Any questions? Going out for bid. Yeah, yes. The, what, what will happen, what will happen is when we select one of these three, then that group will, we're gonna give the mayor, uh, hopefully tonight, the power to go into negotiations uh, to, con to firm up any loose details, um, go over again uh, the qualifications, the schedule, and then enter into a contract. Did that answer your questions? Because it's a professional, yes. Right, right. So yeah, really no, when you, yeah, really no price, if that's where you were heading, Jeff, there's no price really attached to it at this point. There may be discussion, negotiation in terms of fees when the mayor and the particular selected person gets together to negotiate. But right now, this is just based on qualifications, who we think is most qualified and able to work with us to uh, meet our end goal which would be to design and develop a transfer station. So we will pick somebody tonight uh, and then allow or give the mayor permission to enter into negotiations. If negotiations fail with that first applicant, we'll move to our number two selection, if that's okay, all right? So very transparent. So keep, keep uh, an open mind to the questions and answers and uh, you will uh, score accordingly, all right? Um, Rachel and I will have a clock, 45 minutes each. Uh, we're gonna go right down the row as you see. So Griggs and Maloney will be first, Triad will be second, and HNA Engineering will be number three. So any questions before we get started? Have I left anything out there? No, sir. Josh. Josh. Yeah, one to, scale of one to five, five, five being these guys are great, we want them. One being not impressed. That's cool, that's cool. I want everybody, yeah, we don't want to do it backwards. Okay, all right, and then just tally them up at the bottom. Uh, so you should have one, two, you should have seven numbers entered in uh, the column and then you'll have to do some math and then create a total at the bottom and then we will compare them at the end of the night on how they, Co-chair. So price is not going to have any effect on our decision here tonight? No, sir. No, sir. The price of what? 
exactly are you referring to? They're bound to all going to charge a fee. I'm, I'm sure there will be fees involved, but that will be in the negotiation with the mayor. They know, they, I think they know if they've listened to our meetings publicly in the past that we have a set fee not to exceed a, a dollar amount of $200,000. If, if that is a deal killer, then that will come out in the negotiations and we'll go to number two. If we, if we want to accept the fee or if they propose a fee to the mayor and the mayor wants to bring that back to us for a discussion, I believe that would be most uh, prudent to listen to that would be correct. anything they have to say. Thank you. So we're, we're gonna have the last smell test, mm -hmm. Steve, on, uh, on the negotiation. But right now, this is just about A, are you qualified to do what we think we want done? Irregardless of price. Can you do it in the time that we want it done? We good? We ready? Greg Zimaloni, welcome. And as soon as you get up here, wherever you'd like to be, just, to, just one thing, uh, speak into the microphone. I know everybody has a habit of you know, wanting to turn around and look at their slide, and when you do that, you pull yourself away from the mic. So I, I don't know how to fix that, but um, try and speak into the mic so A, the thousands of people that are home watching this, and for the record. You'd be surprised. <laughs> you would be surprised. We'll, we'll have your every word uh, recorded, all right? So go ahead and introduce yourselves, and then I'll start the clock. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my name is Will Owen, and I have Ryan Maloney with me. Uh, we're with Griggs and Maloney. Uh, speaking of thousands, uh, it reminded me of maybe some not so good times when we had uh, an entity called the Bible Park that was uh, several years ago. I was present in this very room, and that was an intriguing time. Um, I am a lifelong Rutherford County resident, born and raised. Uh, father and grandfather grew up out Franklin Road doing a little uh, dairy farming. And uh, Ryan and I both graduated from Riverdale High School. Uh, we uh, have been established consulting firm in Murfreesboro, just down Church Street, uh, since 1990. So for a little over 30 years, uh, we have assisted primarily municipal and industrial clients uh, and a number, a uh, wide range of civil engineering and environmental consulting. And over the past uh, almost 10 years, we've done some land planning assistance uh, to our municipal clients as well. Uh, we have a staff of, maintain a staff of around 30 uh, associates and their capabilities range from professional civil engineers to uh, professional geologists uh, licensed surveyors, soil scientists. Uh, we have an AICP certified planner on staff uh, and a host of other certifications that I won't bore you with. Uh, being a civil engineer, uh, you, you get opportunities to assist your uh, neighbors with random drainage questions consistently uh, and other little minor things, but very rarely, uh, on occasion, you get an opportunity to give back to your community in a very meaningful and impactful way. And for that, Ryan and I are excited to be considered uh, as a part of this potential team for the solid waste challenges uh, that we know are on the horizon for our county. Uh, Ryan is the, the uh, expert when it comes to solid waste and uh, material handling and, and uh, transfer stations. So he'll do the bulk of, of kind of the discussions on answers to the questions that were uh, submitted to us a couple days ago. Uh, I will be a part of the team and um, mostly from the site planning standpoint, uh, any grading, drainage, uh, and utilities that would be need to be to the site, I would head that portion of the team up. Uh, and Ryan would do the bulk of the actual technical work for the transfer station. So with that, I'll uh, hand it over to Ryan. Thank you very much, Will. As Will said, we're, we're really excited to be here tonight. Um, 
I suppose you want to jump into the meat of the solid waste experience that we have at this point. Um, is the format then to go through the questions that were submitted, one through six? No. Very good. Well, that first question um, really was addressing, you know, the amount of transfer stations that we've worked on, designed, and engineered for populations similar to what Rutherford County's population is. And uh, currently, Griggs Maloney is designing a transfer station. I'd say we're 75 percent complete and moving through the permitting phase uh, with that uh, completion level of documents uh, for Sumner County. Uh, the entity there is the resource authority in Sumner County. Um, that facility is, uh, it is a singular facility. Sumner County does not have uh, convenience centers. Um, a lot of their residential, uh, most of the residential uh, 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 collection comes there from several major municipalities. Uh, the cities that don't are, are Goodlettsville, the ones that straddle the Metro uh, uh, Sumner County line, and those, those have private collection that, that usually land at the AAA transfer station for Republic. But by and large, most waste uh, from Sumner County uh, comes to this transfer station. So while the population of Sumner County is probably more in the order of magnitude of a quarter million, um, so slightly less, the tonnage received is greater. Um, that transfer station uh, is a 600 ton per day average uh, facility. And, um, and, and that's pairing with an existing transfer uh, station that's approximately 400 tons per day. So uh, the plan in that particular setting is, uh, is, is, is to build the, the new greenfield site, separate residential and commercial uh, tipping and, and be able to take um, a total of up to a thousand tons per day at this facility and, and that's on average so some of these facilities you know you'll, you'll hear tonnage just thrown around but you know what's really important too is, is to think about what your peak uh, demand is going to be on that facility and so uh, in Sumner County they, these, these averages uh, turn into the 400 day existing facility uh, we've pushed six, 700 tons per day through there. Um, and we're expecting 900 to 1,000 to be able to be pushed through the, the larger commercial facility. Um, so in addition to that, you know, this is a, up until now, the Middle Tennessee region in particular hadn't had a great occasion or reason to have um, new transfer stations being built. So you've seen a lot of, uh, up until this point, you know, somebody grabs a warehouse and that's their transfer facility. Um, some compromises in the design when you when you retrofit a building, um, and we've worked on a lot of uh, different communities uh, situations where um, maybe that transfer facility was a little less than desired. And we've also done master planning for um, Dixon County and their transfer facility. Uh, they they have a situation where uh, they're starting to out outstrip and outgrow their. Their, their demand there, uh, what, their, what their transfer station can handle. Um, and City of Murfreesboro as well as the places that we're working to help master plan a transfer station on the south side of, of Rutherford County. So with that, um, I'll, I'll, I'll ask if there's any questions I might address for item one. Ron, the mayor has a question. So to be clear, because we're trying to score this on a rubric and the, for the purpose of time, how many transfer stations without regard to size has Griggs and Maloney designed and engineered? Two new Greenfield transfer stations. Perfect. Thank you, sir. What's a Greenfield transfer station as opposed to some other kind? Is ours a Greenfield? It, it would be because I, I guess uh, what I'm saying there's not a retrofit, not a not not anything, uh, a complete new site that you're developing for a transfer station. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, this kind of pairs generally with the last question of the largest transfer station our firm has designed and engineered uh, by tonnage and capacity. Um, we talked about uh, the ongoing, uh, almost complete design there at, at RASCO. Uh, that one is uh, 1,000 tons per day on average with, with a much higher peak. 
And so what that equates to um, in tons per year is roughly 220,000 tons per year. Uh, now, I, I guess I'll qualify that to say that, um, you know, the, 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 the actual total for both those facilities is going to be 370, but I think you guys are interested in, in something comparable to a new transfer station that you'll be looking at. And so um, with, with, with that, that transfer station being 600 tons per day and 220,000 tons per year. Um, my understanding is uh, the county's looking at a facility that's going to be in the order of magnitude of four to 500 tons per day and uh, up to 150,000 tons per year. Can I, can I may address any questions to, to that question or response? Bishop, <clears throat> Bishop, go ahead, jump in. How long have you been uh, working on the Sumner County project? So Sumner County, uh, the resource board in Sumner, Sumner County has been a, a, a client of ours since 2014. Um, we began uh, that process um, probably initially in 2017 uh, with a solid waste, um, some solid waste master planning we did for the, for the entirety of the, the, the county for um, slanted towards you know, the resource authority's purpose. Um, it's to note that the resource authority in Sumner County is not uh, Sumner County. Uh, they, they are their own entity, so they're in responsible charge of most of the waste that, that gets managed in Sumner County, but they are not the, the county waste board. Um, so from 2017, when it was put forward as, as a need for that, um, uh, for the resource authority, uh, from there, it, uh, it got conceptualized in how a phased approach to managing the existing facility, putting traffic in a, in a, in a, in a, in a loop, um, and developing a new transfer station uh, would go down. So the first phase of that was we, we added a new scale because it had a scale that was um, in disrepair, um, and then a lot of other site work um, that occurred with the first phase of the project. And from there, the second phase kind of got skipped over and went straight to phase three, which is the new transfer station. Um, it got to a point of preliminary, through a preliminary engineering that then required a bond to be issued. So uh, in, in, in this setting, there are three entities that comprise the board of the Resource Authority, and, and they are Gallatin, Hendersonville, and four members from Sumner County. And so there was some interlocal agreements that had to work their way through. Um, it took about a year or so and to get bond funding in place and uh, as, as that worked through, um, you know, that picked back up the project within the last year and we've been full bore on trying to get this out to bid and we've got a bid target of probably February to March. Thank you. Ryan, question for you. Yes, sir. So. The, the new transfer station that you guys are designing is rated at 600 tons, peaks at 900 tons a day, right? Yes, sir. And then that's added to the existing transfer station they have, which is about a 400. So uh, basically, when you add two together, you're going to be pushing out 1,000 tons a day. Correct. Okay. And and I, I did not hear the, the tonnage you expected for Rutherford County. What was your comparison theirs versus our potential. My, my understanding is you guys are looking at something in the neighborhood of four to 500 tons per day okay. and 150,000 tons per year. Okay, gotcha. All right. We've spoken a lot about this transfer station. I think as we kind of might be good to try to give you a snapshot of it here. I got a video that you know, we may come back to again if I can get it to play. No. Nope. Well, maybe see if we can figure out how to push play on there. While we figure out our AV, um, I'll, I'll jump into question three. Oh, very good. So we, we've spoken a lot about this transfer station. This is uh, this is its current rendering um, based on the design that's, that, that's present to date. Um, what you see here is uh, we've elected to go with two larger bay doors. Um, 
with more of an aircraft hangar style door. Uh, you know, important thing there is to have a, a good clear opening. Um, we've got a single shed sloped roof to the back. Tunnel loadout. And this is a lift and load type transfer technology. All the drainage is collected and, and, and manifolded out to the back of the site to a stormwater pond. Um, this particular facility is probably going to be outfitted with a compactor, um, but it's also set up for flexibility, which will allow for two uh, transfer trucks to be loaded simultaneously. Uh, support spaces are always important to your transfer station. This here is showing uh, the uh, more where the admin office, the, uh, the bullpit manager of the transfer station will sit, general manager of the operations superintendent, whatever you'd like to call them. Uh, down below you've got um, you know, support uh, spaces for mechanical, electrical, fire riser room. And so, you know, th this is representative of the facility that we're talking about. You guys, square footage-wise, probably are looking at something very similar um, in magnitude. But um, what's the footage of that? Uh, that is, give or take, 20,000 square feet. All right. So the next question is describe the methods required to get a transfer station design from concept to construction and and you know I think I think most firms would tell you it's a probably similar process um, what we're talking about here but um, I, we like to begin ours with um, you know uh, the due, di due diligence phase and that really sets the, the planning stages for the project um, we're gathering information about the site and its characteristics we've got to get proper geotechnical information uh, developed. We've got to get a site survey done. Um, this is a part where we identify, you know, any and all permitting utility needs uh, as part of the project to be able to uh, go to that next phase of, of, of uh, design. Really concurrent with that, we, we, while you usually have to wait a little bit for the, the drillers to get out, you usually have a little time for the surveyor to get their pieces done. Um, you know, the next part that we like to run concurrent is, is really the programming phase. So that's the phase where we talk about, you know, who are your users? What tonnage do we expect to have? What are our tonnage proje projections? What, are, what is our planning horizon? Um, you know, what are, what are our need to expand and, and, and how do we do that? Um, and so we, we look at you guys and, 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 and look for feedback and, and look for that ability to exchange information so that when we get to the phase of getting this due diligence information in, we go through this programming phase through a series of meetings. We got the opportunity to put it on paper the right way. Um, and that's for us to move faster um, through design and also to have um, the ability to, 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 to get that design concurrence as we move along. Because you guys are going to own this. You're going to operate it. You're going you're gonna to get to live with it. Um, your designers will you know, they'll come and go. Uh, I like to think we're a little different in that we, we live in Murfreesboro, we're in Rutherford County. Um, we're we're gonna be here to support the project, you know, beyond just the design phase. However, at the end of the day, you guys, you guys get to live with it on a day-to-day on -day operation. So um, it's important to set all those things the right way. Uh, you know, getting out of the due diligence phase and the programming phase, um, you know, with this project wanting to move at, at, a, at a fast pace um, due to the landfill situation or potential situation, um, you know, we need to get in the preliminary design pretty quick and get the information um, developed from programming to concept. And there'll be feedback opportunities. So once we conceptualize the site, you know, that's the first thing you get to look at that, that shows what's on paper, that shows what this facility might look like. Um, but getting through that preliminary design phase is going to be important because we've got to, um, it's going to be necessary to identify, you know, how our utility connections are going to be serviced, um, how we manage the fire flow required for the transfer station, um, and getting our, our, our permitting needs met early in the, in, in, in the process because it's, they're going to take time. They always do. Um, so, 
at each step, you know, and I'll, and I'll cut this, you know, um, I'll, I'll kind of fast forward, you know, we, we like at these regular design intervals, 30%, 50%, 75, 90, to be able to come to you with a set of plans and work, work with uh, your solid waste director to make sure his needs are, are, are heard and being met through the process. Um, to be able to get that feedback all along. Um, you're gonna have a, a, a pretty major step. You know, we'll advance the site first because you know, going through Rutherford County planning will be, be part of the process. And so um, while the total design might be at say 50%, you know, site plan's gonna be progressed beyond that. Um, so we can get that site plan in as, as quickly as possible. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I think, you know, we, we've worked with Mike Hughes and worked Doug, with Doug DeMossi and, and Sheila, and, and, and so there's a lot of, um, I think, advantage to having, you know, those pre-coordination meetings and it being an accounting project. I think we'll have a, a great opportunity to work with those folks in advance. Ryan, the yes, sir. Uh, mayor has a question for you. So I've got two questions. Going back to your first question, what relates to this, what did you learn in the first project transfer station you designed that you were able to apply to the second? And how did that learning curve assist you in expediting the design and engineering of the second project? Sure. Um, well, there, there's two parts to that question, right? The first one I'll say that, um, you know, by and large, going through the, um, going through the process when you're, when you're working with a, uh, an entity like Rasco, for example, they've got existing operations personnel that, um, quite frankly, I took advantage of in a, in, a, in a positive way. I was able to ask them what what makes a, a, the best transfer station in your mind, and, and how does what 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 facilities do our owners, our clients benefit from? And so, just like you'd look for um, end user input, you know, who's going to own and operate it. Um, when you're dealing with um, a company that uh, their load haul uh, company is, is who I'm speaking of, when you're dealing with an entity that, that operates across hundreds of transfer stations across the U.S., you know, I was able to pick their minds, have some back and forth with them about what, what, what makes a really good transfer station. And so, um, Mayor, I think, I think I'd say I benefited from uh, getting feedback from folks that have broader experience and, and, and applying it to that transfer station would be the same thing that I would do uh, for you guys as we move this project forward. And, and so the point of that question was th this next question, and I'm done at least on this. A transfer station essentially is a large concrete pad and a metal building where you're moving material around a lot. And so all transfer stations hold that in common. Knowing that, how much of any transfer station is really unique to that location other than the soil that you're having to fight on excavation. Taking that piece out of it, I mean, really, when we're talking about a 20,000 square foot building, if that's what we're talking about, there's nothing particularly complex or complicated about a concrete, steel, metal building, correct? Well, you put it in those terms, no, but there's there's a lot of nuances to making a, a transfer station be what it needs to be in function. Yes, but my question is, is are those unique from transfer station to transfer station or are 80% of all transfer stations alike? That, you, see what I'm, you see what I'm saying? So there's, once you've done one, there's a great deal of familiarity with doing the second, the third, and the fourth, and basically it's just like, okay, we've done this before. There's not a lot new that's coming into this because basically what we're doing is moving trash. And I would say that is, can be generally true. You've got, um, and, and it kind of reflecting back to your you know, earlier question, which was, um, you know, to do with, uh, you know, what, um, how you would how you would look at that design progression, you know, because you've done one before. Well, the answer is when you've got one in the queue and you're and you're in the process of of working with the whether it's a pre-engineered metal building manufacturer or whether it's a, uh, your structure is going to go steel frame for you or that you've already got the doors picked out. If you assuming you guys like, I mean, there's a lot of decisions to be made, right? But we are in the process of doing that right now, and and so to your point. Yes, there's some there's some efficiency gain by 
uh, doing transfer stations uh, sequentially to, to one another. Um, when you talk about a transfer station, you really do have to though look at, you know, how, how what equipment do I want to use? What's appropriate for the size of this facility? You know, um, am I going to push into a pit? Am I going to lift and load? Am I going to, um, you know, have a centralized pit? And sometimes, you know, the, the tonnage is going to drive those decisions or the user base. Um, so the, the answer is yes, but it's a qualified yes, right? Understand. Thank you, Ryan. Ryan, if, if I can, Mayor, I think the three things that came to my mind as far as making the site unique: uh, accessibility, so the, your internal traffic circulation, uh, but also how that traffic uh, is able to get into the site, uh, circulate within the site, and then leave the site. Uh, the second thing would be <clears throat> uh, grading and drainage. Uh, each site's going to be. So pretty unique in, in how and in, in the direction of flow. We know that, that your potential site is, is pretty in close proximity to the Stones River, so uh, we want to be aware of that in our design. And then the third thing is going to be utilities, and there, there, there will uh, be some opportunities to um, address some challenges when it comes to utilities. Uh, there, there may need to be some um, cooperation with uh, the two utility providers, either consolidated or the city as far as getting potable water there uh, and then also disposing of, of wastewater. So uh, those, those three things specifically uh, would be uh, unique uh, for each site, uh, but mostly utilities uh, for this site and then the proximity to the Stones River would, would make this unique. Thank you, that helps a lot. Okay, Joshua, hold on, Ryan. Yes, sir. I've got a question about kind of your the timeline. Um, what is your company's um, ratio or, or, or uh, percentage rate of staying on schedule, staying on budget with your projects? We aim to stay on budget and on project schedule, you know, every job we take. And well, you always aim to, but I'm yeah. wondering what your history, your track record is. I think uh, I could answer it with, you know, uh, we manage, um, we're, we're, at, we're at client number almost 1,500, and um, we're still working for our um, longest tenured client, you know, one of our, our, our very first client. And, and we're, as Will mentioned, I think you got the date wrong, but we started in 80, 88, so we're, we're about to eclipse 35 years. Uh, our, our history kind of is a testament to uh, our, our able ability to deliver a project on time and on budget. Um, I, I think I could say that uh, every, every project's not perfect, but, um, and I don't have a percentage. I, I, don't, I think it'd be unrealistic to think it was 100, but I would say, uh, Joshua, it's, a, it's a, a very high rate. Um, we manage a lot of grant deadlines for uh, existing clients, and those have to be performed on, on schedule and on time, and, and um, most often there's not an additional budget to be had, so, um, you know, if, if I was, Guessing at it, I'd say 98 out of 100 projects we've delivered are on time. You, you have some that 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 have circumstance um, that that we manage with a client as we go through it. And uh, for example, uh, getting a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers is a great way to have your project delayed um, if it's not moved through that process efficiently. Sometimes you have tough permitting uh, endeavors and unforeseen things that can cause those those delays. But if we, if it's within our within our control, we we usually have a pretty pretty high success rate of project delivery on time and on budget. Anthony, you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, Earlier, you had stated about the, the project you were working on. You started it in 2017, and you're still working on it? Yes, sir. But uh, to clarify, you haven't been daily working on that. You've been held up things out of your control. Well, for example, I mentioned the core earlier. Because that's five years. That, 
Yeah, well, in, in, in 2017, that was phase one of scale replacement and, and the completion of a solid waste master plan. So we weren't working on, we weren't working on new transfer station at that time. That was when it was first recommended in a report, um, much like you guys might have received in a solid waste study at some point that, that you know, helped the county drive its decision making towards um, a transfer station. So no, sir, we, we, we did not start working on this full bore until the bond uh, uh, issuance looked like it was going to be certain between the entities involved, and that was uh, fall to early winter 2020, if I remember right. So we, we've been at this, you know, maybe closer to 16 months, and we've got a nine month delay with the core right now. So. Good news is it doesn't look like you have those sort of uh, situations unless there's a utility crossing that's uh, on the Stones River, but utility crossings aren't what we're dealing with in, in Gallatin. All right, continue on. Um, I guess we're still still kind of uh, going through the process to get this to construction. Um, we left off at you know talking about the design percent completion progression. Uh, once we get to uh, 100%, you know, we, we manage the, uh, uh, the county's bid process on your behalf, however that, however that looks for you. If you have folks that uh, um, manage that, we work with them to, to get it out to bid and advertise properly. Uh, you know, state minimum for bidding is two weeks. We'd, we'd always recommend something of this size to have more of a four-week bidding window. Um, and, uh, and, 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 you know, from that point forward, it's, it's really about getting the notice of award issued and the contract um, signed and, and executed by all parties. Uh, decisions there that, that the county should think about is do you want to pre-qualify contractors or not? Uh, from that point forward, you know, a pre-construction meeting, uh, the contractor's going to progress his work based on uh, the construction schedule and we're going to get submittals and shop drawings and process those. and. Um, you know, the things we got to look out for there is, is just some long lead times and that's, that's the, probably the biggest uh, risk to your schedule um, as, as we move through it is just the availability of whether it's a pre-engineered metal building or, you know, I got a notice the other day there was, you know, 35 to 45 weeks lead time on switch gear, certain components. So you, you just don't know what's going to crop up and be hard to get at the time that, that we build. But, we see that settling down uh, as we go forward, generally speaking. So I think, um, you know, beyond that, you know, we're, we're, we're punching the project out and, and, uh, and, and getting ready for receipt of, of, of solid waste. All right, hold on, Mayor. So once the plans for the project are generated and complete and delivered, the county commission sends out a RFP or RFQ for request for quotation based on the plans. Uh, a contractor, um, and, excuse me, go ahead. I, I was going to say you, you could probably choose to procure it in, in one of two ways, but you know I, I think right just just a bidding right uh, scenario my, would my, be my question that, that once we've done all that and we've select a general contractor. My question to you is, in what capacity would Rutherford County expect Griggs and Maloney to act as, continue to act as a consultant because you, you generated these plans, how would you interface potentially with the contract of the GC or would you? We would be the design engineer of record, so we, we would have um, involvement through construction uh, in, in that capacity, and then I would recommend at a minimum to have uh, also a resident project inspector on your job. And that would, be, that would be included as part of the overall design and engineering. Would that be correct or incorrect? It could be, yes, sir. Yes, sir, that, that could all be up front and part of, of, of the progression of our work uh, okay. developed up front, or it could be something that comes on the uh, is, is developed as a separate proposal once it's bid and it's time to build the project. Thank you.
other questions regarding uh, methods required to get a transfer station from concept to construction. What projects have you done in Rutherford County? Not, or what projects have you done for Rutherford County? Understood. Um, primarily, um, for Rutherford County specifically, uh, we've done a lot of environmental work with Ben Mankin. Um, and those items have ranged from uh, uh, more like asbestos inspection um, and, and, and consulting along those lines, uh, materials management, hazardous materials management, and, and, and county owned structures, schools, for example. Um, Mr. P, I think that's that's about the extent of. Uh, I think we've done some phase one type ESA or, or all appropriate inquiry type work with you guys as well. Which is good to lead in for the fourth question here. Describe your experience in obtaining a necessary permit uh, from TDEC and Rutherford County, uh, and current working relationships with regulatory authorities in Tennessee and Rutherford County. Um, you know, what we have enjoyed, uh, kind of follow up to that, your question there, Mr. P, was um, we, we have worked with, with Doug and, and Mike Hughes and, and Sheila Huffmeyer uh, throughout the years in their capacity as county engineer and, and, and planner, and uh, even before that, Eric. And, and so, um, you know, we have good relationships there with, with uh, planning and engineering and to a lesser extent building codes. Um, and so, you know, when we get to that, that um, point in time where the site plan's required, then we need to, to understand uh, what Ms. Sheila needs, for example, for stormwater, uh, easy conversation, um, or what, what, what's important for uh, Doug or Mike on, on the site plan itself. <clears throat> I, think, um, I think that relationship, you know, kind of pays dividends. The, um, other things, you know, and, and major interactions we've had with those folks is uh, we, we represent uh, um, Blue Water Industries who have um, some mining operations in Rutherford County and, and we've assisted them through the planning process, uh, whether that be a, a plat or, um, and we've designed some subdivisions for some residential uh, developers. Uh, that's not our bread and butter. We mostly work for city and county government. and. and uh, and also state government, and so, uh, but every now and then we have a, a project that, that brings us through uh, those processes with the county as well. Uh, we also have good relationships at, uh, at TDEC. Um, I'm working with, you know, the solid waste uh, EFO director, Mike Horsley, um, as we uh, work on several landfills in, um, um, in Sumner County. And, and several beyond, we, you know, we, we, we probably have some reporting and monitoring that, that goes on at, um, you know, 20 some, odd, some, 20 some odd landfills in the state, working across multiple environmental field offices. Uh, we're current with understanding the rules and regulations. Um, and so, uh, you know, transfer stations, say Tennessee are permit by rule. Um, and there's a, that, that's, that's a, usually a little quicker pathway because you meet the intent of the rule and, and uh, you can move your project forward with, with a pretty, uh, you know, orderly fashion in that, in that regard. Um, and then we've also got, uh, you know, uh, complete turnkey in-house services uh, when it comes to uh, getting stormwater uh, permits, stormwater pollution prevention plans if, if, if needed. You know, we hadn't talked a great deal about utilities, but if needed, you know, uh, subsurface disposal permits or pairing with whatever uh, uh, subsurface disposal or sewer connection the existing scale house has at the, at the facility. Um, and then lastly, our environmental permitting side of the house. Um, if we don't see a need for an ARAP here, unless there's, you know, uh, you, uh, you know we're going underneath Storm, Stones River, um, like we'd mentioned before, but um, the, um, that'd be a, uh, the only instance. Otherwise, your, your site looks pretty, pretty good from the air at this point. Um, can, I, can I answer any questions about our experience from the permitting perspective? I mean, I, 
I, I think I can tell you we, we work with regulatory agencies and we probably, we have a staff of three and that's, that, that all they do is, is seek permits on behalf of our internal engineering staff and uh, for external uh, private developers and city and county government. All right, Ryan, you and Will have about seven minutes, so once you hit the highlights on the, the remaining. Very good. All right. Um, probably the, some of the most important parts here um, in, in terms of uh, what we can do to make, make Rutherford County's transfer station um, uh, somewhat innovative and, and, and useful for as long as possible and, you know, and, how, and how we make it flexible for the changes that might be in front of us, whether that's growth, whether that's changes in technology, whether that, you know, um, you know in my opinion is this, um, and, and where I see things fall down most often is, you know, uh, getting people in and out of the transfer station. If you can't get folks in and out of the transfer station, um, you've lost from the start. So traffic circulation and good design on the site and how we move vehicles uh, is important maybe the most important thing. Uh, second to that, um, and that plays into efficiency. Second to that um, becomes really the building itself. And, and, and while it is a, you know, uh, at the end of the day, a, a metal building and a concrete slab, you know, the things that make it last and things that make it durable are what's most important. Um, and from that regard, uh, well, there's certain things that, that we like to do to, to make sure that, you know, this building is gonna take that daily beating from moving solid waste in and out of it are, are, are done right. And that starts with how we get in the door and making sure we have proper door clearances, making sure we've got good height to the bottom of the structural members uh, inside the facility. Um, and, uh, and then even still, I, I like to do things, for example, if I can get away with less doors and less corners for folks to run into, that's, that's good design. Bollard doesn't stop big trucks all the time and you'll still be replacing doors left and right if, if uh, I don't think we can make them wide enough. Um, but um, other things we do when we think about doors where we do have roll up doors, like in a tunnel setting, I'm gonna embed uh, the door tracks so they're not exposed, not able to be hit. Um, you know, for your push walls, uh, the reinforced concrete, but we're gonna put steel plates at the bottom of them because that's where the concrete's gonna take the biggest beating. Um, we're gonna look at the tipping floor because that's what's gonna wear out quickest. And that's what's going to be probably one of the first things that um, just from a wear and tear standpoint uh, may need replacement. But we want to get you as much, long as we can out of that floor. We want to get 10 to 15 years solid and, and have a way to take that floor down and, and replace half of it when, when it comes down. So thinking through, you know, what aggregate we use in the concrete and the hardness that it, you know, that it has, you know, walking you through what... Um, available uh, toppers and admixtures there are that can prevent chemical attack and, 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 and prevent abrasion from happening on that wear surface of the floor. And, and making those design decisions with you to make you understand what's the cost, but what's the benefit. And so that's really important to the durability side of this thing. Um, and, 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 you know, furthermore, uh, Bishop, you killed me if I put a bunch of trench drains all over it. So no matter what happens, don't let people put trench drains all over your, your, uh, your, your uh, transfer station there. So um, the other thing, too, is, you know, your site elements, you know, you've got a lot of tractive forces. You've got big trucks turning loaded. Um, so, you know, the things you, you do on site are, are important to the durability because the last thing you guys want to do is build this facility and come back and say, I've got to be down and because I got to fix this because my station wasn't durable. Um, you, you, want to, you want to spend the money up front to make it resilient to, to the forces it's going to receive. Um, flexibility is another thing that I think is going to be really important for, for the county. Um, you know, Rutherford County is poised for a lot of growth. Um, this transfer station, uh, typical planning horizons are going to be 20 years is what I'm going to recommend. but. If your growth outstrips typical, uh, you know, those planning horizons, or even when you hit them, you're gonna to start to feel those pains and you're gonna look for opportunity to expand and you gotta have a way to do that. You gotta have space to expand. You gotta be able to um, be able to uh, connect to that building in a meaningful way if that's what we wanna do. Or we make the conscious decision that this is how big this facility is gonna be and another transfer station is gonna pick up the load. 
there's not a wrong answer, but you need to think that part through. But that's also part of that programming we talked about, you know, at the front end of, of, of what we're doing. Um, and, and then with, with everything that we do, um, you know, you got to look at safety. So how you sign the site, how you move vehicles, and um, how it's, how it's, how it's uh, developed in that regard. Every decision we have is, is going to be grounded in, in, in making it a safe place for your customers to operate. So why Griggs and Maloney? Well, I hope, Mr. Cush, we've, we've done a, a, a good job in, in explaining our expertise tonight, and um, that's a piece of it. Uh, our proximity, we've also stressed, uh, we're here, we're right down the road. Um, I think our, our meeting schedules are gonna be effective and, and, and meaningful and, and immediate um, in how we can respond to the county. And, uh, and I think I've, we've talked about our relationships with, with folks in the, in the county uh, as it is and with a state that, that can help us move things forward in an efficient way. Um, most of our employees, um, by and large, live, work, play right here in Rutherford County. Um, we're proud of where we live. We feel like that, um, you know, this being a successful project is 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 as important to us as as it, as it will be for you guys, and um, we really appreciate the opportunity that that you've given us to be here tonight. So that's my why. Fantastic. Sir. You got 29 seconds. Will you want to say anything? <laughs> uh, uh, just to summarize, so active design. Um, on the current transfer station, 16 months approximately, and we're about at 75, a little past 75% complete. Um, we have existing client relationships with Eagleville, City of Murfreesboro, and Laverne within Rutherford County. Uh, I think they would vouch for our time, timeliness and cost effectiveness. And having lived here, born and raised and grown here, I, my desire would be to take the project from cradle to grave, not only through construction, but I have a, a a heritage and a reputation that I'd want to see the project and its longevity for for my lifetime. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. All right, gentlemen, we're, we have uh, we'll take about ten minutes. Uh, so use that to tally up your scores, take a water break, and then we will bring in Triad for our next session. So uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves, and uh, we'll get started. All right, um, good evening. I'm glad to uh, uh, represent the triad team uh, here tonight. Uh, just want to first of all, I'll just start off by saying uh, we appreciate the opportunity. Uh, we've worked with uh, Rutherford County Solid Waste Department for over 11 years, provided um, good service to them during that time. And uh, we obviously want to continue to work uh, on a project of this magnitude, this importance. And um, you know, some people will say, "Well, it's just a, it's just a transfer station," um, but it can be, uh, it can be that, or it can be so much more than that. And uh, we understand that. We understand um, your all's position and uh, where you are, because uh, we've walked uh, alongside of uh, Rutherford County for the last 11 years, looking into these issues. So we understand. Uh, we understand where you're coming from because uh, we've been there with you. But um, my name is Jeff Postel. I'm a senior engineer at Triad. Uh, we are a, <laughs> we were a small company. Uh, there were about 18 of us and we were re recently purchased by uh, Montrose Environmental and they're a firm of, uh, on the engineering side of things, about 600, 700. Overall, they've got over, over 2,000 employees. So um, our work continues here locally, uh, and uh, really from a local standpoint, nothing, nothing really changes. Um, as part of our team, uh, we realize we, our expertise is in solid and hazardous waste. Uh, we are not a structural engineering firm. Uh, we are not uh, mechanical, plumbing, and, uh, and uh, 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 in transportation, uh, well, mechanical and plumbing, as we don't do that. So we've uh, we've pulled together a team 
that uh, of experts that are local uh, to help us with that. And Graham here is gonna tell you about some of our partners. So uh, my name is Graham Hanline. I work with IC Thomason. I'm a uh, senior electrical engineer there. IC Thomason is a MEP FP firm up in Nash based out of Nashville, but we have offices in Mississippi, Florida, um, Louisville. We even have uh, one guy out in Seattle right now. But uh, we've been in business for 80 years. Um, we have 65 plus and growing professional engineers in our Nashville office here, as well as uh, over 200 employees in our Nashville office. So we have a lot of combined experience. Um, we, we do work in every, every different industry. We have experience in all fields. And uh, we're teaming up with a couple of um, very strong uh, structural engineer and architects in, uh, in the local area. Um, MHP is the architectural firm that we're teaming up with. Um, they've done work with Middle Tennessee State, uh, United States Postal Services. Um, they've been in business for over 50 years or over 30 years. Um, LBYD has been in business for over 50 years. They're the structural engineer that we're going to be working with on this one. Um, between the two of them, we've been, uh, we've been working with them at least for 20 years apiece, and they are uh, some of the strongest in the country. LBYD, they've They've just got through doing the GE aviation plant up in um, Lafayette, Indiana. So we've got a really strong team put together. Between the three of us, we've got a lot of experience in every industry. All right. Um, we also are, are bringing to our team a, uh, some, somebody that's outside the box. Um, our firm has been around since 96. One of, our, um, one of our largest clients is waste management. Uh, They're the uh, largest uh, waste management company in the United States. Uh, we, we've, been in, uh, we've worked with them since 1997. So uh, we've worked on their landfills, we've worked on their transfer stations. Um, we have a, a lot of experience with them. As part of our team, um, if the county would allow it, we'd like to bring them on as a special consultant. Now, uh, they're not a traditional um, engineering firm or anything like that, but they've got expertise in the operation and, ma and operation maintenance of, of uh, transfer stations and recycling facilities. They bring a unique um, view uh, to a project like this. So um, our thinking is um, it's, uh, it'd be good to have uh, some individuals like that to be as a consultant, excuse me, on this project uh, to have their eyes as an owner and operator. And they've, I think they own or operate uh, 350 transfer stations across the United States and Canada. So having their eyes on something like this uh, is, is something valuable and unique that, that we can bring uh, to this project. Okay, so on this, do you want us to just go through the questions? That'd be great. Okay. Uh, the first question was, how many transfer stations have you designed and engineered for populations that are similar or larger in population than Rutherford County? Okay, so for Triad, I've listed out here, one, two, three, six different sites, a couple uh, from Rockwood Sustainable Solutions, one here in Rutherford County, uh, one that is in Wilson County. Uh, we've done conceptual designs on both of these projects, and we've already obtained the permit by rule from TDEC on the Rutherford County uh, site, but not the Wilson County. That's supposed to be going in um, probably this month is the idea. The, uh, the, the, we've done work with the waste management Antioch transfer facility in, in Davidson County along with several um, material recycling facilities also in Davidson County, all with waste management and that that work has ranged from uh, permitting, uh, sol um, stormwater permitting as well, solid waste permitting, SPCC plans. We've done some con combustible dust issues uh, as well up through there. Uh, we've done engineering related to um, redoing tipping floors, 
uh, dealing with pavement issues outside of these. Um, several of those facilities were already existing facilities where waste management has come in and have had to do modifications to those. And so we've assisted waste management adapting existing uh, facilities uh, as well. And then, let's see, and then you want to speak on the uh, Wayne County? Yeah, so, so oh, Jeff, I, ho hold on, Jeff, just one second. I got, I got two questions, Mayor first and then Steve Piercy. So just point of clarification, <clears throat> your expertise in design and engineering transfer station is as it relates to your relationships with ICT and waste management, is that correct? We've done conceptual designs uh, we'll do the environment. I mean, we'll do the environmental permitting. Or triad will do the environmental permitting. Correct. But we'll when it comes to actual beyond the concept, when it comes to creating the d design and engineering of the transfer station through the production of detailed drawings, your you you then incorporate ICT and waste management to assist you in that part of it to completion, is that correct? We will include ICT on in that. Waste management, what we plan on using them for is on the conceptual side of things as we're developing out our plan, that they have their eyes on it. When we go through, and, and we'll talk about this later, a 30% and a 60% design, or I'm sorry, 30% and 90% design, those areas, I'm sorry. <laughs> in those areas, we will also incorporate waste management as a consultant. They would not be designing. So in all cases where triad is the design and um, design engineer for a waste uh, a transfer station, you have a partnership agreement agreement with ICT and waste management. Is that correct? Um, for waste management, we have worked on their projects. Correct. And we've done design work on that. Um, but uh, here's, the, here's the question. Uh -huh. Is all the expertise to create from concept through design to production drawings, is all the, is all the talent necessary to do that within Triad? Or is this, the, the, is, is this why you have ICT as a partner? That's correct. Thank you. We, we do not do concrete design. We don't do building design. We'll do the civil design okay. and the environmental permitting. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Sorry for the No, no. Confusion. I just want to get a clarification. Steve, you want hold on. <clears throat> Can you elaborate on the Rutherford County site that you briefly mentioned or no? Like um, what size or where? Uh, okay. Yes. That is... Um, it is the, it's been permitted, it hasn't been constructed, uh, we've got a conceptual design out there. So the state of Tennessee has, has authorized a permit by rule for that site. It's up Highway 70, it's the, um, the Vulcan Quarry is, is where the site is located. Um, did that get your answer? Okay. Yeah, and, uh, for I.C. Thomason, um, we completed the Waynesboro transfer station up in uh, the Waynes County transfer station up in Waynesboro. Um, we did that probably five or six years ago. We did the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing for that. It's a 6,200 square foot transfer station with a thousand square foot office facility in it. It was 6,200 6, square feet with the 1,000 square foot office on, on top of the 6,200. You said Vulcan? Yes. In Cannon County? Uh, no, it is, it's in Rutherford County. Where? Um, it's up 70 <laughs> on the left. <laughs> um, Going toward Nashville? Yes, sir. Okay, I thought that was a uh, group there. Yeah, it, um, It's, changed. It's, it's the old Vulcan uh, site. Lojack, thank you. Um, we were working with, the company we were working with is Rockwood Sustainable Solutions. They basically take um, 
uh, C and D waste and uh, sort it and recycle it. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Yep. Feel Just clear. before we move, the 6,200 square foot building with offices was a was it a transfer station? Yes, and sir. Just tons per day or tons per year? I'm just curious, that size, All right. the tons per we, day, do you have any so, concept? Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find that. They don't, I didn't, I couldn't get in touch with the, uh, the civil contractor that worked on it, and they usually have that information in time before the meeting, so I apologize for that. But. No worries, thank you. My guess would be that it'd be uh, pr roughly half the size of what we're looking at here. Chairman. Yes, Anthony, go ahead. I might be confused, but when you said that you had other entities that you would bring in to do certain jobs, uh, would that not increase the cost of us hiring you? Uh, I know you would assuming you would bring them in and pay them and you would do the project of certain price, but it just, in my mind, I'm thinking if you don't have the people employed by you, that's gonna, and since I think we're not going to bid, we're just gonna choose, is that correct? So, seems to me like it would be more expensive uh, as far as comparing your company to a company that had staff already in place. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, let me help you. <laughs> Anthony, I, I, I don't know that that's a fair question because everybody has a team. Uh, Griggs and Maloney has a team. They're not specialized in the whole scope. So they go out and hire experts as well. Uh, I don't know about the North Carolina team, but um, it, everybody has their expertise, so they call in in, in a group. Okay. W whether we, whether I see Thomas is is the the name on the that has stamped the plans, or whether it's um, Triad stamps the plans, we're negotiating, and the contract would be with whoever, and it's their responsibility to whatever. X a dollar amount we decide, they're splitting it up amongst themselves. We don't we don't care how that shakes out. So uh, well, I understand that. I I just wanted to make sure that there was no difference. No, in, it wouldn't in matter what if it's, they're saying because it just sound different the way it was presented. Yeah, I was yeah. just trying to clarify that. Wouldn't matter if it's one or ten. Right. Yeah. I mean, I know everyone's not on staff with yeah. with someone you hire, but all right. Okay. Um, let's move on, I guess, to question number two. What's the largest transfer station your firm has designed and engineered by tonnage and capacity per day per year? Um, so I, I added a couple in here, um, the Rockwood one, which um, size-wise, it's uh, the one in Rutherford County is probably a little larger than what I had anticipate here. Based on the preliminary numbers that that was out on the RFQ, um, you know, I, I think your building's going to be about 15 to 20,000 square feet. Um, is 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 probably where we're we'd be li looking at. So the the Rockwood facility is is similar in size to that. The one in Wilson County, um, that one's 500 tons per day. Uh, it's a little it's a little smaller. It, it was an interesting site. Um, there was, uh, it, it's it's tighter than the site that we have, so we we had to be creative about traffic fo flow patterns and and trying to um, keep the safety of the employees uh, at a premium. And um, of course, we've also done work with the Antioch transfer station for waste management, and um, you know theirs is. That site's gonna be two or three times the size of the site um, that we'll be designing here. And um, 
And then uh, we've also done work with some material recovery sites that will be about the same size as, as what we're looking at here, maybe even a little, uh, a little bit larger. So we, we feel like that we've got a good understanding of um, the project scope. Uh, we've, we've worked on similar projects of size. Hey, Jeff, really quickly, is the, is the Rockwood um, partnership, is it construction and demolition stuff or is that MSW? Okay, the, the one in Rutherford County is permitted for uh, MSW. Okay. The one that is in Wilson County, it's currently permitted for construction and demolition. And, it, and what we, as part of our work, we increase the scope of the permit to include MSW. So. All right, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, one more question, Bishop. Yes, uh, how long would you say uh, in the Wilson County project was it from, from initialization until completion? Um, that was driven a little bit by our, our client. Um, and um, from the time that we received the notice to proceed, um, we turned around the application for the permit in less than a month. Um, we did go through, um, he was not certain exactly what he wanted, and uh, so we went through um, uh, several iterations of, okay, conceptually, what do you want to try to achieve? Where do you want buildings and that type of thing? So it was a great relationship working with him. Um, being a small company, we're very flexible. And so that was, um, it, was, it, was it was an easy working relationship with, with Lincoln. Other questions? All right, number three, um, describe the methods required to get transfer station design from concept to construction, um, provide an estimated timeline for the panel's review. I know first of all, y'all want to know about the uh, time frame, <laughs> and uh, we understand your all's um, uh, desire to have this completed, uh, construction completed within two years. Uh, we believe that that's achievable. Uh, we, uh, our goal is to have it designed and permitted within seven months. Uh, we think that that is doable. The construction time, um, it's, it's, it's hard to estimate in just right now with the economy of things. Um, but we anticipate a 12 to, to 16 month uh, time period. Now, what we, our, our flow through concept to construction is as soon as we get the notice to proceed, uh, we're going to uh, start drafting up some ideas. We're gonna need to do some initial meetings to, to really narrow down the scope. There's some key questions that need to be asked and, and, and Rutherford County needs to decide on. And uh, the quicker that we can get those, um, those questions answered, uh, the less frustration that there will be in the process and we'll be able to hit the target earlier. So what we don't want <laughs> is to have a moving target. Now, we understand that, um, that there will be um, adjustments throughout. And what we don't want is, is like a, a drastic change in the scope. So we want to make sure that we listen to you all well, that we understand what your all's desire as a, as a county is. We want to know what's most important to you. We, know, we want to know what's kind of important to you. And we want to know what's not important to you. And with those kind of priorities, then we can turn around and come up with a design that meets your all's goals. And uh, that's what we wanna try to do. So we anticipate that we'll come with a conceptual design. We'll talk through it, work through it. Uh, you'll tell us this is what we like, what this is what we don't like. From there, we'll um, work through that, produce a 30% design. 
and then again meet with you make sure that we're on target and you all are on target that we're giving you what you're ex uh, expecting and um, and then from there we'll go to a 90 percent design and at that point there really shouldn't be any significant changes there should there may be some minor changes some tweaks here and there but for the most part uh, we feel like at that point uh, it, we, we should be right on target. And then from that, once we get your approval, we'll produce the final uh, plan, set of plans and specs. So that will get us to um, a position where uh, you can send it out for, uh, for bidding. And we can, we'll, at this point, we work uh, at your all's pleasure. <laughs> you know, um, if, if you want us to, um, be part of the evaluation process, we can do that. If you just want us to answer questions, we can do that. Uh, that's, that's really up to you um, and, and your responsibility or, or your, your preference. Is there anything you wanna speak into? This is some of your area. Well, you know, we just from, from the mechanical, electrical, plumbing and fire protection standpoint, like I said, we, ha we have the staff to complete any schedule that's required. Um, we don't miss deadlines. Um, whatever, Jeff, after we get all of our questions to him and we get the answers from you guys, we're gonna come up with that schedule and uh, it'll be a schedule to make sure that we hit all the deadlines required so that we can get our design completed and to you guys in a timely manner so you can get the bids out the door and start construction. Um, you don't speak about construction oversight. Yeah, I mean, so so as you were saying, you know, we, uh, I personally, I, I was a contractor early on in my career. That's where I started out. So I, I actually feel like that's probably one of my strongest characteristics with Ice Thompson is that we're able to um, work with the contractor closely on the construction administration side and uh, making sure that we're designing a product that's not going to require, that, that makes sense, really, from a buildability, a buildability standpoint. And that's what our company really does good and all of our projects typically hit schedule because of that reason. We don't have to go through a lot of VE exercises after the fact with contractors coming back telling us that what we design doesn't make sense. We're able to um, keep everything moving in the right direction and help help procure the right contractor based on the bids that come in as well. Wait, wait, hold on, Jeff. So uh, with regard to the, t thank you, Chairman. With regard to the timeline you've out, you've given us, is that a design build timeline or is that a design and build timeline? My understanding was that this was gonna be a design and then submit for bids and then you all select the bidder. That is, that is, that it was the assumption, yes, but my question is, is your timeline is based on design and then build, correct? So that it's design, correct. send out for quotes, then and build, correct? That is correct. To what extent, and that is correct, so to what extent can we abbreviate the timeline by going design build? Speak to that. I can. Um, I, the team that I'm on with IC Thompson actually specializes in design build, so we have a lot of experience with that. And Excuse me. Tell the committee what design build, please. Design build means that we procure the contractor at the beginning of the project and work directly with the contractor through the design process so that we can come up. Basically, it helps us release all the long lead time items earlier. It helps us to make sure that we are designing on track to what a, an even a buildable solution. So what we've done in the past working with contractors early on is we've been able to release these long lead time items like the switchboards, um, any air handlers, anything like that. I mean, I know they probably won't require an air handler on this facility, but um, it allows us to cut time off on the, the waiting period because right now, as we know, with COVID and everything, the way the industry is tr has changed over the past few years, lead times have gone through the roof. And so by Doing design build, you're able to release the equipment very early on in the conceptual and even the SD stages based off of our knowledge and the contractor's knowledge of how this building is gonna get built. So it, is, it, it cuts. 
I, I don't have an exact time frame. Sure, sure you don't, and we're not. But right. there would be, would there be substantial time savings available to this project in a design build as opposed to the way we've currently talk, discussed it? The majority of the time saving would come in the building portion of it, obviously, because the design portion is still going to take roughly the same amount of time, but you would pick up all the time on the back end. Say that you had a piece of equipment that was a year lead time, and you, I apologize, what, what time frame did we say we were gonna do this design in? The design seven months. Right. Okay, so let's say we can release that gear or equipment in three months instead of seven months. Okay. Then we're not worried about equipment getting delayed any longer because obviously these lead times, they're not go they haven't gone down any time recently. They've done nothing but go up. So it, is, it, it allows us to lock into those lead times and not get surprised on the back end when initially it's a year lead time on something, you finish the seven month design phase and it's a year and a half lead time. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, continue on. All right. Um, is there any other, or is there any questions on, uh, for question number three? All right, then I will go on to question number four. Describe your experience in obtaining necessary permits for both TDAC and Rutherford County. Uh, do you have current working relationships and planning and regulatory authorities in Tennessee and or Rutherford County? Um, this is what we do. Uh, we get permits um, through TDAC, uh, Division of Solid Waste Management, Division of uh, Water Resources. Um, that is our core business. Um, so y the answer is a very strong yes. We've got um, Triad is, is known within um, TDEC, Solid Waste uh, Division of Solid Waste Management, as, as one of the um, major players um, in the solid waste field. Um, we, um, we get solid waste permits all the time. Um, we, do, we do a ton of landfill work. Again, we do the landfill work here uh, for um, um, uh, the Rutherford County Solid Waste Department. Um, on the water portion of this, really the, the only permits that are gonna most likely be required is gonna be your construction general stormwater permit uh, through the state is the construction general stormwater permit and then uh, we'll have to modify our permit for the industrial discharge uh, of uh, industrial stormwater discharge. But again, that should not be, neither of those things are gonna be um, time critical uh, in this project. Then for Rutherford County uh, permitting, do you wanna speak toward that? Yeah, yeah. So, so I see Thomason, since 2017, we've done 250 plus projects in Rutherford County. Some of them smaller, some of them larger scale, but in the grand scheme of things, we've taken 250 projects to design and built them. Um, so we have a lot of experience going through the permitting process here. Uh, so typically what we would do is the first thing we do when the project first, we first get the notice to proceed and start working on the project, we'd reach out to codes immediately and we'd start working with them. We'd find out you know, what items have been issues in the past on similar facilities, um, what they've, they've had headaches over, what they've had heartache over, and we have a strong relationship with them based on the quantity of projects that we've done with them that they, they typically answer when we call. And so we'd reach out to them, we'd find out the application process, get the forms ready, and start going through getting it filled out so that we don't have any hangups once we get the, per the permit set of drawings ready to submit. We already had the application ready to submit as well and then we, uh, we would submit it, wait for the permitting to come back. Typically we can get ourselves a little bit further ahead in line just based on the, the amount of work that we do with them and the relationships that we've built over the past couple of years. And again, we, we triad, our team has a good working relationship uh, with our regulators uh, within the state of Tennessee. Um, we know our regulators, uh, we know Mike Horsley, we, um, he knows when, when we make phone calls, they, they answer. Um, so again, um, you know, we, we feel like we have this base covered very well for, for Rutherford County. Any questions on number four? Steve? Did we not hire you a year or so ago to uh, design a couple of our convenience centers? 
Yes, sir. Uh, we did the conceptual design on um, Rockville, and then we did the complete design at Leanna. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, I really wanted to talk a lot about the, <laughs> just from the state, but uh, they're convenience centers and, and not transfer stations. And uh, so uh, I know you all know the difference and uh, that y'all probably w wouldn't have been impressed that uh, I threw that out there. <laughs> so yes, we did. Um, and on that one, we did the complete civil design um, on Leanna and um, uh, we, we got that one permitted locally, uh, lane disturbance permits through Rutherford County and such. Thank you. All right, move on. All right, uh, number five, uh, Rutherford County is looking for a transfer station that utilizes the most innovative technologies to maximize transfer stations usefulness for as long as possible. What specific technologies and design elements have you worked with that would provide great benefit to Rutherford County's rapidly growing populations? Are they adaptable, flexible, and able to meet the needs of the changing environment? Okay, for this site, uh, if we're looking at a transfer station only, um, technology is, uh, for a size, uh, for a facility this size is pretty standard, okay? Now, um, we recognize um, that the county's growing and that your all's needs, your all's needs 10 years from now may not be the same as your needs right now. Your needs 20 years from now will definitely not be the same. Therefore, we've got to design a building, a site, that is capable of growing as needed. So um, we would propose doing basically a master plan that where we, this is where the building's gonna be, this is our, our traffic layout, uh, but we're gonna have spots in reserve for future build outs. And we, we, we would probably propose um, building the building if, uh, if cost allow, a little larger so that there's flexibility in there so that if in one day you wanna put a materials um, handling facility in there. If you wanna, if you wanna convert this site to a C and D um, uh, recyclable um, uh, facility that you'll have the, have the room to be able to do that. And so the idea is uh, with our design would be to make it as flexible as possible, um, to to make sure that that um, that you have room to grow. Okay. Now, um, this is also where um, our partnership with waste management assists. Uh, they're the largest uh, waste handling company in the United States. Uh, if it's been attempted with waste, they they it, they've they've been on the front lines of this, okay? They know what works, they know what doesn't work. They've been there, they've done it, and, um, and they've got the stories to tell about it. So they would be, again, a, a good consulting uh, voice to speak into any kind of design like that. If, if we were on the front end of this project, if we were looking at um, the, the idea of going more automotive, um, they can tell us specific um, equipment to avoid, um, you know, just to, just to put it out there, and they can tell us the nightmares that they've dealt with, okay? So again, for if we're dealing with just a straight transfer station, um, you know, we're, we, we've got that covered, that's easy. If we're gonna get, if we're gonna expand out to do some, some things that are a little, uh, a little more uh, exotic, uh, we have the capabilities of, of, of doing that. Questions? Joshua. I'm just curious, being consulting so much with waste management on the design and the structural of it, are there anything within this, um, within that scope that might, um, how do I word it? 
force our hand later to deal with the company because we cater the building of the structure itself more to what their style of equipment and their experience is versus having the ability to come back in with different types of companies and different arrangements later down the road. Right, now uh, I need to, to emphasize waste management. Basically, they're just going to provide a, um, a voice of experience uh, from operating transfer stations. So they will not be providing equipment. Um, that's, that's not what they do. They will just, um, uh, they will provide, provide a voice, okay? So what we would, we would undo is we're gonna hear from you. We're gonna know what you want. Uh, we're gonna run it through them as part, or, you know, we've got ideas of, of how this is gonna work. They're gonna help us see any blind spots that we may have or that you may have, okay? So um, they will not be recommending specific equipment or anything like that. They'll just tell us, hey, we've had good luck with this and don't buy that, it's a piece of junk. You know, that's, that's how we plan on utilizing them. Does that make sense? Chairman Cush. Yes, sir. Got a question for him. Uh, I want to talk about Leanna myself. Uh, I've been on this committee five years and been trying to get Leanna built almost that whole entire time. So I want you to give me a timeline on when you started and with the Leanna project and where you're at. Okay, on the Leanna project, our task was to design it, and we did. We were not asked to, um, to bid it out or anything like that. So our, our task was to design and get it permitted. So I, uh, we worked with Mac Nolan on his, um, you know, what he wanted, and basically we hit his goals. Uh, we got it permitted through the state, we got it permitted through um, Rutherford County with the land disturbance permit. Have you got any dates to go along with that? When you started, when you oh, got gosh. it completed, uh, how long it took to get the permitting? The, uh, the, to, get the, to get the solid waste permit, my guess is, is probably 30, 60 days. Um, this was in, 2018, 2019, um, and I was not the, I was not responsible for doing the civil design on um, John Junowski with our office was, and he'll be, he'll be the lead civil uh, engineer on this project, but um, he was responsible for getting it through uh, the land disturbance permit here. And, and I'm sorry, I, I just don't remember how long it took. Mr. Chairman, uh, since those questions were apart from the discussions we're regimented to have, can we give that time back to try it? Would that be Most appropriate? Definitely. You, okay. you won't be penalized for that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. All right, are you ready for your final question? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> I make it good. <laughs> How much time do we get? <laughs> we only got a couple of minutes, right? Uh, you've got uh, six you, minutes. Yeah, you've got about six, seven minutes. Okay. So uh, basically the question is, what makes your firm the only choice for Rutherford County? Well, first of all, I'm not arrogant enough to, to come up here and tell you we're the only choice out here. Um, there's other good firms that are, would love to have this work as well. Um, I, we are capable. Uh, we have done this. Uh, we have the we have the knowledge. We have assembled the team that can get every aspect of this job done and done well and on time. Um, we we have a long history with working with the solid waste department here in Rutherford County. I know the site. I know the site personally. I go to the site fairly regularly. 
I've walked those areas. I, I know the traffic pattern out there already. I know um, the good and the bad and the ugly of the site. We know the geology. We know the hydrogeology. We know the environmental issues out there. Um, that's worth something, okay? Um, we, our firm, um, we, made, we made our name uh, for listening to our clients and achieving their goals, okay? That's, um, that's my reputation, is we listen to our clients, we provide expert advice and engineering services, and we serve our clients and we do it well. I promise you that we will do that here as well. Um, we, we are dedicated to seeing you achieve your goals. What I've got. All right, Jeff, thank you, Graham. We have, we have a minute or two for questions if anybody has them. Steve. Since you're so familiar with that site, will it work for a transfer station? Absolutely. No problems. I'm not going to say no problems. <laughs> few problems. Uh, yes, it will work. You have um, a few constraints out there, the river, the floodplain. Um, you know, a lot of that portion of the site has been um, uh, robbed of some, of some tops or from soil out there, but it can still work. There is um, some constraints on the roadway entering it. Ideally, on a, on a transfer station, you want the trucks in and out in 15 minutes. Um, that's going to be difficult just because of the long winding road, landfill road to get there, um, okay? We can deal with that. Um, we'll probably need to um, make some queuing lanes, um, especially to, to account for future growth out there. Again, I know where the landfill is. Um, we know where we can uh, expand the road if necessary, um, that type of thing. So uh, will the site work? Yes. All right, Jeff, and you have a question? No. no. Oh, Graham, and uh, on behalf of Triad and I.C. Thompson, we appreciate you guys coming and Thank presenting. You. So, all right. All right, you guys, uh, we'll take another 10-minute uh, break, give you time to tally up your scores. You should uh, have a leader in the clubhouse or at least a tie at this point with uh, one uh, group remaining, which is HNA Engineering. So, uh, Give yourself a couple minutes and we will uh, switch out teams and uh, be ready for our final. Applicant of the day is HNA Engineering, I believe, out of beautiful North Carolina. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. So uh, please introduce yourself. He is going to do this on his own, right? Flying solo. No fear. No fear. No fear. All right. Um, and. Uh, you have 45 minutes to uh, give us the, the sales pitch and, okay, presentation, and you, did, did you still have a clicker up there? Down here, okay. Perfect, and, and uh, IT, Rachel, will be happy to explain how that works. Yeah, you think it, you think it would be that easy. They're really just kind of support slides for the end, so I'll just Fantastic. start in with right. questions we'll, if you don't mind. We'll speak into the mic so the whole world okay. can hear you, and yes. uh, you are set to go. Okay. Well, thank you all for having me here tonight. My name is Raymond Hoffman. I'm a professional engineer based out of Statesville, North Carolina. That's a little town just north of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I've been in the business of solid waste since... Oh, 2001 as a consultant, uh, spent several years as uh, area environmental manager for one of the large national solid waste companies, which I will not name and they will not be part of my team on this project. That does offer 
uh, kind of where I'm different from the other two engineering firms that you've heard. Very qualified, very capable of getting designs done, permits done, as my firm is as well. But I bring a unique perspective to the table in that I'm an operational consultant, having been on the facility owner's side where you all sit, you know, I understand the complexities that are involved with the project that you've all got proposed on the table. And the RFQ was looking at a transfer station design and permitting process with construction, not a problem. I think the two other firms you heard as well as my own can do that very effectively for you. When I received the questions two days ago, the six questions that I'm gonna read through, this thing took on a new shape. There's a lot more complexities involved with just designing and permitting a transfer station based on the questions. So if you don't mind, I'd like to start with question one. How many transfer stations have I designed, engineered with populations that are similar? So based on population status that I could see, it looked like Rutherford County is about 352,000 citizens and growing rapidly. There's construction all over the place. So assuming one ton of waste gets generated per person, that's 352,000 tons of waste that someone's gotta manage. So when the landfill closes, you know, a lot of the waste that's out of county is not gonna come here, so you don't have to worry about that, but you still have to be prepared to handle the 352,000 tons that potentially will be here. Equate that into number of operating days of 300 operating days a year, you're looking at potentially 1,200 ton a day facility, which is a pretty large transfer station. Transfer stations that I've done, comparable in size, uh, Greensboro, Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. North Carolina is growing significantly as Tennessee is here, especially this area. Uh, the one in Greensboro was, was one of my first projects uh, with this large waste company. Um, it was designed open bay system, so we didn't have to worry about doors getting banged into pillars or columns getting crushed by backing up trucks. It was just an open bay scenario, easy to get in, get out of. Um, other facility that I built later in my career with that company was in Richmond, Virginia. Again, similar size, uh, population growing. Uh, we did that one from the ground up and that one did have the columns and pillars because the company had migrated into thinking that was a better safer way of doing things. It would get trucks into their proper lanes for backing in. However, it does create a lot of blind spots and it creates a lot of shadows inside the building. So I don't wanna get into designing your transfer station tonight. I think there's a lot of conversations that are gonna need to be had with you all before you even get to that stage. So again, I'm just listing some of the operational considerations that'll need to be discussed before you pull the trigger on designing one facility. I'd also like to note in my response, you know, these cities that I mentioned, Greensboro, Raleigh, Durham, uh, Richmond, they have more than one transfer station in those cities. So you're not really looking at a one transfer station scenario here in my belief, and it sounds like some of these other firms are already permitting uh, transfer stations on other sites. So waste management's waste will probably go through their transfer station. You won't have to worry about it. It'll go to, to their landfill. Republic will probably figure out what they need to do with the transfer station and they'll keep their waste going somewhere. As will other companies that will likely pop up when 3,500 tons of trash becomes available or 350,000 tons for the year. So. Anyhow, I think it's gonna be a multiple transfer station scenario, uh, hopefully in different sectors of the county or city so that you don't have all the traffic flooding into one place uh, and becoming a problem for the neighboring community. 
That was question one. Any questions? Just to be clear, then, without regard to the size of the transfer station or the municipality or the region it's in, how many transfer stations have you designed and uh, engineered in total? So I've been involved with uh, two, the, the ones in Raleigh and Durham with the design and the permitting of those. Um, one was a greenfield site, which is a new site. Uh, they actually didn't decide to go through the local building process to, to go. They had some investment issues, so it was just site grading and getting the permits in place. Uh, the ones in Greensboro, in Richmond, I was involved with managing consultants that actually did the design and was involved with the construction project management of those. Thank you. All right, question. Continue on, Raymond. Okay. And I do realize I'm standing between you all and dinner, so I'm trying to be brief. All right. Uh, two, what is the largest transfer station your firm has designed and engineered by tonnage capacity per day and per year? It's a little bit of a trick question. Um, each of the both transfer stations that I mentioned, the Greensboro, Raleigh, Durham, uh, we felt like we could get 1,500 tons per day through there, which I feel like would meet the criteria of the 1,200 ton a day facility uh, for the waste volume. There's a lot of considerations that need to go in how you get 1,500 tons per day or 1,200 tons per day through a facility. Limiting factors being how much floor space do you have so trucks can unload their waste? How fast can that waste get loaded into trailers? How long does that trailer have to go and make a round trip to get back to be reloaded? So if you figure on 1,200 tons per day facility, you're looking at about 54 transfer trailers to be able to service the needs of that facility. Again, that's a lot of, lot of trailers that, that have to be filled. So if the 54 trailers are available at some point in time, they're on route to the landfill, they've got to make the return trip, hopefully they don't get stuck in traffic. Other issues, but assuming you've got available trucks that can be loaded, you can get 1,500 tons through any size facility that you decide to design to do. Difficult. Uh, let's see, so um, the hours of operation will dictate how many tons you're gonna get through there. You know, if you start early in the morning, work later in the evening. Of course, you have to match your hours with what the landfill hours are, how long it's gonna take your trucks to, uh, to get there. Will they get there before the landfill closes? And so, this thing may be trickier than me. I did figure it out. Got right to the end. Let's see, come on back. Real quick question, if I might. What is reasonable range to expect a 53 foot trailer loaded out compacted for 24 tons of trash? For 24? Tons, a okay. typical trailer would. 22 or so. Yeah, 22, 24. It compacted, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the load time? Typically, there's a be a range in there. If the waste is on the floor and available yep, that's to, be, to be picked up, yes. I mean, 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Now, if you overload that trailer and have to pull waste back off, so then you start talking load scales. So, a lot, a lot of factors there. Yeah. So, I think, I think, you know, what I've heard tonight from the other two presentations that, that wasn't mentioned is, okay, you want to build a transfer station. We haven't talked about the disposal of that waste. Where is it going to go to? You know, that's going to be a critical factor to figure out. And just in my quick preparation time of looking at what's going on around the neighborhood here of Rutherford County, you don't have a lot of options close by. One of those, you know, two, two of the county facilities, the two on the right up there, um, they, they really don't have the capacity and I don't know if they'd take Rutherford County waste anyhow. 
Uh, the one option there, the red circle on the lower side, is the waste management facility that would likely want to receive your waste. And, you know, as long as they can handle the 1,200 tons per day that you'd be sending to them, they're an option. Things to be considered. You have to know where your waste is going to go if you build this transfer station. So. Let's see, so assuming you have eight tons on a collection vehicle coming into the facility at 1,200 tons per day, that's gonna be about 150 truck tip, trips coming in, another 54 loaded trailers going out. That can be a pretty big impact to a community, which again is why I think you're looking at multiple locations to kind of offset that. So, you know, the community that's been up there dealing with the landfill traffic for years, may not want 200 trucks coming in and out. Um, just something to be considered. That's question two, I think. Any questions? Good comments, Raymond, Go continue on. Okay, thank you. So describe the methods required to get a transfer station designed from concept to construction. Um, again, it's not going to be any different than, than what we've already heard from the previous two. You know, my goal would be to meet with the county, identify your needs, identify the needs within the community. What's the community willing to accept? You know, how much truck traffic uh, are they willing, willing to handle? Uh, establish the estimated waste tonnages. You know, right now I'm figuring 352,000 taking every bit of waste that the county might generate, but we know waste management's gonna have stuff. We know Republic's gonna have stuff. So you have to take those into consideration so you don't overbuild a facility that's not gonna receive the waste. We also know that I think Middle Point Landfill takes C and D waste and MSW waste. So when you design this transfer station, you probably wanna keep those two waste streams separate as they may go to different facilities at different rates, different haul times. Again, looking at, at the drawing up there, the black circles with crosses, I think, in them, you know, are some of the C and D facilities. I haven't looked at each of those in detail yet to see if they're viable options, but you may have some cost savings by keeping your C and D way separated from the MSW. I think one of the other presenters mentioned recycling of C and D waste. Yeah, C and D waste is very recyclable. So better to pull it out of the waste stream, not send it off for disposal and pay for those extra charges. So when you set up a transfer station, you're gonna keep that in mind. Keep them separate, keep that waste stream separate. Oh, well, let's see. So again, going through the process, meet with the county, figure out the, the potential for traffic impacts. H&A uh, Engineering, we would generate some conceptual drawings, begin grading plans. I've already got CAD design eager to get going on some grading plans, but you know, it, it, it's really too preliminary, so I've got, got him on hold. Uh, the building footprint, you know, I've typically done 100 foot by 100 foot. Concrete pads, put a metal building on it, you know, have a loadout pit. Uh, I prefer load over walls versus just in the floor pit for safety reasons, but the county may, may choose otherwise. I'd help them along those lines at making those decisions. Uh, let's see. Step three, submit application to TDEC, uh, permit by rule. So. Didn't look like anything complicated there. It's been a while since I've done TDEC permits. I used to have one of the landfills out in the eastern side of the state, uh, but I do know the folks there. I know, know a few of their solid waste permitting folks, and you know, TDEC is set up as Rutherford County uh, is set up. You have rules. As long as you comply with those rules and meet the conditions of those rules, they're almost obligated to give you a permit or at least a set of questions that you can respond to to satisfy them so that you get a permit. So working with TDEC's not gonna be a problem. I don't think working with Rutherford County's gonna be a problem, or at least I'd hope not. <laughs> Hopefully y'all could pull a little weight on that if, <laughs> if it started to get hung up. Yeah, 
there you go. <laughs> uh, step four, develop construction level drawings, contract bid documents. You know, I would do the same thing as the, the second presenter would. I would find a mechanical, electrical, plumbing contractor to help do those drawings and they would meet the county code so that you can get your permits. I don't do those things, I'm a five person firm. Uh, so, you know, I would sub that work out as well and it's probably better that, it, that I do because I would, I would be able to figure it out at a much longer time and cost. Uh, whereas I could hire a professional that already knows the codes locally and would, would be able to do those designs pretty easily. As far as the structural, the metal building, most metal building suppliers have structural engineers that design them to meet the wind loads, the snow loads, stuff like that, so that's not a problem either. Uh, we would go through uh, the bid project, you know, assess the bids, select the contractor to perform the work, monitor the work through a CQA or, or PM program. It's difficult to give you a cost for that until the contractor's been awarded the job and selected so they can tell you what their schedule is going to be. You know, if I told you I can do it in 10 days and then they come back with a schedule for, you know, 160 days, I'd be out a lot of money with an inspector uh, where I missed, missed my budget. So. so that would come later on in the process. Step six, work with TDEC to receive the permit to operate and begin operations. You know, you have to keep your regulators informed. Uh, I would get them involved early on, let them know what it is that we're trying to do, what size facility. They'd probably, they'd probably feel pretty good that you're actually taking those steps with a landfill getting ready to close, that you're taking the necessary steps to handle the waste that's gonna be, be coming at you pretty quick. Another thing that needs to be considered, you know, the, we talked about the transfer station process. Well, again, you have to figure out where your transfer station is gonna transfer waste. So you've gotta be working concurrently on a disposal contract. A lot of counties and, and a lot of the private waste companies don't manage the operation at the transfer station. They sub that work to the hauler so the long haul guy is usually responsible for loading his own trucks so that they meet their weights, they maximize the weights on the road, and they get the waste to the landfill. So that's a decision that the county's also gonna have to consider. Do you operate it or do you third party contract that? And that thing needs to happen at the same time that your facility's being constructed or else you'll be sitting there with a constructed building and no place to send anything. Raymond, can I ask you a question right there? Yes, absolutely. I, I, I underlined that early on when I was reading your answers. In, in your history, or the history of some of the Virginia or the Raleigh-Durham projects, how, how many of those counties are self-performing or self-operating versus letting somebody else run the facility? All of those are uh, being run through third party really? haulers. Okay. Yes. I think city of Greensboro started out initially doing their own loading, but they contract the haul with third party. So they may, they may still be doing their own loading, but uh, Very good. When, when the city or county does the loading, then they're responsible for maximizing the weight on the truck. So you're not paying fees for underloaded trucks or overloaded trucks, you gotta hit it just right. So then you have pit scales to help you do that. So you've also gotta look at uh, purchasing your front end loaders, the equipment that you're gonna use, uh, having the staff available, having the staff trained, finding 54 trailers, you know, to be able to load those, maybe a few extras in case something breaks, you know. If it's mechanical, mechanical, it's gonna break. Maybe a yard dog that can move, and, and I don't mean a barking dog, but <laughs> the trailer, the tractor that moves trailers in and out of the pit for you and then stages them so when the tractor comes, it can just pick them because you don't wanna leave a loaded trailer that you can't move out of your pit. You wanna, you want a fresh trailer in. 
So those things have to be considered, you know, almost day one because they will take some time. You'll want to bid those out. And, you know, you don't want to be beholden to just one company. One company may not be able to take all of your waste. So you put it out on the street for bid and see what disposal options and what the costs are going to be, what the transportation halls are going to be. So there, there's a lot of complexity there. That's question three. So if I'm hearing you right, and tell me if I'm not, you're saying a lot of that heavy lifting we need to be doing right now on the front end as far as here's the here's potential x amount of tons do you want it how much and if we need to if one person or firm can't do it all we need to be having vendor one two three set up maybe before or during the design process yeah absolutely um I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait to get going on that process. And, and you need to be looking at the entire market to see who's developing things because I've already heard there's, there's permits out there, there's facilities ready to be constructed. People are probably waiting to see if the landfill's actually gonna close in six years. But you know that trigger will get pulled, you'll have multiple transfer stations and, and waste will find a place of where it's gonna go. And, and I think you'd be smart to, to be looking at those opportunities early. That's question three. Yes, sir. Mayor. Mayor? Yes. After, after you've completed the, um, the engineering and design and you've submitted plans for us then to go shop for a GC for the construction of this transfer station, what do you envision your role in or do you envision having a role uh, with, with the GC and the county at that point? Or are you basically walking away saying, I've delivered the plans, my responsibility is complete? No, the fun part starts with construction. <laughs> Glad to hear you say that. Yeah, um, well, I was a contractor. I, after I left being a facility owner. Well, just because you design it doesn't mean they can build it, by the way. Right, right. Usually you don't get into a lot of issues with transfer stations. You know, the designs are pretty straightforward. You know, but clear me a flat pad and put a concrete slab on it and pit and put a metal building on it and you're good. And you've got the site work, storm water and stuff, but uh, uh, those those aren't aren't too difficult. I, I would look, you know, hopefully the county would want me as their support engineer and CQA, so I'd probably have an inspector out there making sure that everything's going according to plan and uh, keeping you all informed as to the, the process and, and if there's any hiccups, because sometimes those do occur. With regard to the timeline you've presented, do you, and I asked this of a previous applicant, do you anticipate there or can we expect some um, time savings with regard to a design build as opposed to a design and build? I didn't really see that there was there was going to be a lot of issue with the permitting process. So, you know, identifying the long lead time items, which in today's world it seems like everything is a long lead item. You don't know what's available. Um, you know, I had a really good friend that that was building a lot of transfer stations for me. He recently passed. <laughs> Uh, his son has taken over the business and his, and his superintendent is still there and obviously he's got a lot of experience. If design build was an option, they would probably be the ones I would lean on to get through the process. I don't know that it would save a lot of time. Okay, thank and you. I, and I was pretty aggressive in my timeline anyhow. Right, I, exactly, yeah. That's, which was kind of the nature of my question. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions on number three before I get us closer to dinner? Okay. Describe your experience in obtaining the, oh wait, I did answer number four, right? The necessary permits from uh, TDEC in Rutherford County, I think we're past that one, so I'm on to number five. Even better. So Rutherford County is looking for a transfer station that utilizes the most innovative technologies to maximize the transfer station's usefulness for as long as possible. 
you know, what specific technologies and design elements have you worked with that would provide great benefit to Rutherford County's rapidly growing population? Are they adaptable, flexible, and able to meet the needs? So I think it's great that you're looking for, for smart technologies. I'm not sure that smart technologies in transfer stations really exist. Um, you know, the waste industry, they've, they've figured out the process. You bring small trucks in. You let them unload, you get them back out the door, you load that waste into longer trucks and, and you send them on their way as, as fast as you can. There's technologies available, there's higher strength concrete, there's toppings you can put on concrete floors, you can put steel plates on concrete walls, those are all pretty standard things, so I don't know that they're, they're that innovative of technologies. Even when you do those, they add a lot of cost to the project. They may extend the life of a floor or the wall for some period of time, but these things do wear out. They do need to have a replacement schedule. Again, that's kind of where I lean towards multiple facilities versus being stuck with one. It's very difficult to shut down a transfer station to make repairs because that waste is still wanting to come in and concrete needs time to cure. So you need an alternate site or you need enough floor space to where you can do it in sections. And you need to plan for that. 10 years, that's gonna be pretty good for a concrete floor as long as you know that you're gonna replace it or you're gonna overlay it at some point in time. I've worked for companies that didn't let me budget to replace a floor and even when they got large holes in them. Um, so the floors will wear out, the walls can be protected with steel plating. Beyond that, I'm not sure if there's too many other technologies, pit scales, so you know how loaded your, how heavy your trailers are as you load them, so you don't have to unload them when, when they try to leave the facility heavy. Um, I think it's, it, it should always be encouraged. Again, talking the C and D waste versus the MSW waste. If you can keep those two components separated, I think you've got a lot of opportunity to recycle C and D material and not ship that off to a landfill. There's a lot of value in concrete and asphalt and asphalt shingles and clean wood, easy materials, cardboard that can be pulled out of the waste stream pretty easily. So kind of a mini MRF. Um, and, and you'll want to do that versus sending it down the highway and throwing it in the trash. You know, there's value to that. So I've talked about the primary consideration and keep your MSW separate from C and D. Some items to consider would include operating as a mini MRF a material recovery facility for the purpose of removing, mention that. Um, your MSW streams, you know, there, there's a lot of talk on keeping organics or food waste out of the MSW stream and composting. You know, you've got issues with that. I'm, I'm actually a compost instructor in North Carolina. You know, you've got odors, you've got uh, liquids, the leachate to manage if you start getting into that. Not sure that that would be a recommendation. Usually you just want the MSW to hit the floor and. Go, go off to the landfill for disposal. But it's an option, you know, if that's, if that's what you want to consider. Um, of course, I'm, I'm the weird guy out there, and I do have a little bit of experience uh, with reclaiming an old MSW landfill up in Loudoun County, Virginia, uh, many years ago, uh, where we actually excavated the unlined portion of an MSW landfill and flipped it and put it into the lined Subtitle D landfill. Um, my part of the project was getting through the top layers of dirt, uh, which consisted of about 100 holes that were about 25 feet deep before we found the top layer of waste. So it was a lot of dirt moving, uh, which became daily cover for the active landfill. Uh, the county was successful at getting all the waste material excavated and into the line. And then they lined that area to use as future Subtitle D airspace 
and the reason why they did that was they had a contam groundwater contamination issue and, and they decided to make that investment. So it was, a, it was a nice project. I know you all have an online facility there, MSW and C&D, so I threw it out there. I know no one wants well, to have not, That isn't exactly correct. We have a clay-lined facility, okay. so that's okay. be technically correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. Uh, so that really kind of, you know, it presents that you could have a subtitle D option there. I don't know what the acreage or space is. I haven't looked into it that closely. And I know that the community around there is pretty well done with landfills, so, you know, again, don't, don't hit me on the way out the door. I'm <laughs> just going to go try to find some chicken across the street. <laughs> so, any... Questions on number five? If we have time left over, I may come back with a question on your excavation. Okay. Great. Good. So specifically, what, what makes H&A the, the firm of choice for Rutherford County? And, and again, much like the response that, that uh, Triad had, you know, there's a lot of great companies that have proposed that are very capable of doing this work. Um, so I think you've been very fortunate to get three responses in that regard. Um, you've got two local choices, you know, so they're gonna know the area a little better. I don't know that I can't learn uh, what's required. State rules are, are pretty easy and I've been through them already, so I don't see uh, problems there. Um, Again, I think H&A Engineering, we're highly experienced, we're dedicated. We've been on the facility owner's side. We look at things from an operational, from an owner's perspective, so this facility will work for you. I think I've identified some issues that maybe you hadn't considered, uh, that need to be considered. Uh, I think I could walk you through those in more detail as an operational consultant if you felt like another one of the firms in here would present a better design or get you through the permit process, that, that's fine too. Uh, but I felt like reading these six questions was kind of leading more into the complexities that you all are about ready to face when your host fee goes away, your free disposal option goes away, and you are now in the business of managing that waste and getting it to a happy disposal location somewhere. And those are all very complex problems. So, uh, let's see. Again, I think H&A Engineering, you know, with a large waste stream, 1,200 tons a day is large and growing. Uh, the last thing you want is to be unprepared and, uh, you know, when the gates close, you, you want to have all your ducks in a row and be, be ready for it. And, and it's a challenge. It, it's a tough place to be in. And so our experience will help the county navigate these monumental decisions and will provide multiple environmentally safe and protective of human health options for consideration for the maximum benefit of the community involved. I look forward to working with Rutherford County if I'm selected. Thanks, Raymond. Thanks, so. Uh, we have we have time, plenty of time. Okay. So let me ask you a question. The mayor alluded to this, and I, I, I want to ask the question again to clarify. Oh, sorry. Uh, in, in regards to uh, a after the design, we're under construction. Do, do we need you for project management, a CI construction inspection? How can we utilize you? Is that part of your deal? Uh, where do you where do you see? Do you are you are you there till the bitter end when we get our occupancy permit? Where help me with that? If you keep paying my invoices, I'm there as long as you want me to be there. Um, no, no, re really. Um, you know, construction inspection, testing the materials being used, making sure the concrete meets, meets the technical specs, yeah. you know, right through getting into the operation, getting your permit to operate, 
And, and then I also do operational training for a lot of the third party firms that manage these transfer stations. So, you know, to build a nice new facility and put a bunch of untrained people in there, if you choose to do it yourself, well, we can get them trained so they know what they're doing, so they can do it in an environmentally responsible way, get the trash off the floor at the end of the day, wash the floor so it may last a little longer, all those things. And, and you know, I'd be there till the end, yes. Okay, so, and so let me ask this other question up front in terms of team, okay? You said you referenced your dad as like chomping at the bit, I think, to, to start with some my CAD person. Your CAD, yes. okay. I yes. thought you said dad. No, I, I'm, dad. I'm old and hard to hear, hard to hear man, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but are you, are you anticipating to, to uh, partner with a local civil team, a geotechnical team? How, how would you, how are you going to move those chess pieces from office in North Carolina to uh, using some local expertise here? I'm supposed to be okay. pointing here to make this thing like go that way. So, you know, we would want local survey to get updated topography for the site so that we could begin design. We, we pulled some aerial topography that was publicly available, pulled the 100 year floodplain, uh, which is the, the stuff you see in blue there. Um, you know, finding a suitable location on the site, not a hard thing to do. Finding a place that you can grade out flat, not a hard thing to do. Um, would I look for local expertise? You know, maybe for the subsurface, doing some of the foundation stuff, but I've got a very good senior geotech engineer that, you know, understands this stuff. He used to manage, um, one of the construction testing firms up in the, the he was out of Roanoke for a while and out of Richmond after that, but uh, I've got him available as well. So if I had a need, it's probably gonna be more in the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, getting getting those, but you know, I work with other consultants all the time. Yeah, so. all right. I, I guess I'm, I'm hoping to put any fear in anybody that might, that they might have in their head that Hey, this you know this guy's four hours away, five hours away, six, six hours. Okay, <laughs> that, that that's not really going to be an issue. No, the tra the travel is not an issue for me. Um, when I worked for the national company, I had six states that I was responsible for. I got to everyone whenever there was a problem. I was the problem solver for them and keeping them in environmental compliance and managing their capital projects. Of course, I had a team of environmental managers that worked under me, I had one in each state, uh, but the travel's not an issue. Uh, I actually enjoy the trip over. Tennessee's a beautiful state to travel. Uh, usually takes me about seven hours, especially if my wife comes with me, because we stop a little more frequently. You gotta stop for lunch and breakfast, and you know, I can't just hop in the truck and go, but um, you know, the, the travel's not an issue. Okay, all right. Any any questions? All right, we, we still have a couple minutes, so I'm dying to ask this question. Okay. When you reclaimed that existing landfill in Loudoun County, Virginia, I don't know how many years ago that was, but was there any value, was there any recyclables, was there anything left to recycle? Was there value in that other than grabbing airspace? Well, the airspace is the, the most valuable commodity there, and, and there was a lot of it. Um, the 25 to 30 feet of dirt cover that was above the waste. That's got value. Was, was, was very in this, valuable. In this county, that's got real value. Yeah, and they made use of it for, for daily cover in their active site. So, uh, you know, as far as pulling metals out, they didn't try to do any screening. When, when they did a pilot, uh, project they did try to screen the waste and get some metals out they actually set their their trommel screen on fire and burn it to the ground uh, so so on this project they just decided let's just excavate the waste and move it okay but how many cubic yards of waste was actually moved from one site to another 
Do you know? Not off the top of my head. That's a great question, though. That's, that's fine. How long did it take you to reclaim that site? So it, it was it was once you got once you got past the 25 feet of dirt. How long did, did the reclamation last? So, so again, that's um, I was working with another design firm on that project, and, and they had it set up to try and match the daily cover needs of what their operation needed, so it wasn't a high production okay. operation. So it's as need. So it was scheduled to occur over a five-year span. Okay. I was involved really for the first 30 days and, and kind of got tired of watching contractor dig through dirt <laughs> to find ways. So this was, this was a five-year project as well? Yes. Okay, yes. excellent. Thank you. Yes. Right. I'll just add to uh, how many acres was the site, do you recall? Not off the top of my head. I can find that information out and get Bishop, it to you. All right. Bishop has a question. On the, the pit scales, what's their life? <laughs> Depends. Depends how abusive you are to them, how, how they're set up initially. But, uh, you know, if you clean out and you've got ways of cleaning out and you keep them out of the water so the leachate doesn't build up around them, they, you know, they'll, they'll last, but they have to be maintained and, and, and managed. So it's hard to give you, give you a number. And I think a lot of them now have gone to the hydraulic load scales, which, which tend to last longer and are less prone to lightning strikes. That's what my guys always told me. Oh, it was a lightning strike. That's why the scales are out. Nice. Yeah, I had to, to replace load cells this year because of a lightning strike. So. There you go. Yeah. So lightning protection, and, and I've got a funny story some other time for you, but uh, I think I met Larry, the cable guy that installs <laughs> lightning protection. All right, Raymond, thank you. Thank you. And, and uh, I want to say thank you for, for bringing some tough topics to, to our attention. It's not that we haven't thought about those in the past and discussed in this room multiple times, but we always need to be reminded that it ain't easy. <laughs> Yeah. There's a lot of things to think about. So yeah. we appreciate your operations background to be able to remind us of those. So right. thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, we uh, need to finish your tallies. Uh, what I think would be the most beneficial thing to do, and this is open for discussion, but again, at the end of the night, we're, we're gonna select one and, and a two. Uh, because if negotiations with number one stalemates, we need to go then to our number two selection. So I think what we're going to do in a minute is I'm going to ask you who your number two choice is. Okay? And Rachel will record that. And then I'm going to ask you who your number one choice is. And whoever has the most number one votes will be our selection. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm gonna we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you who the second place team is first. Okay? Because in case number one doesn't pan out with the negotiations, we're gonna fall back on our number two pick. So I'm gonna ask you who comes in second place. Then I'm going to ask who your number one is. And whoever has the most votes for number one will be our selection for the number one slot. Did it sink in better that time? Okay, I got a thumbs up from Jeff, so it's all good. All right, do you need a minute or are you ready to go? I think we're ready to go. All right, Rachel, why don't you do a roll call? So we are, again, your number two choice. You want to help uh, tally, Bishop and Mayor, just with the math? I'm <laughs> this is for the number two choice. Commissioner Johnson. Triad. Triad. Commissioner Piercy? 
H N A. H N A. Commissioner P. H N A. Commissioner James. Griggs and Maloney. Griggs and Maloney. Commissioner Dodd. Griggs and Maloney. Griggs and Maloney. Commissioner Phillips. Triad. And Chairman Cush. Uh, HNA. All right. HNAs. I have three. I have three for HNA and two for Griggs and Maloney and two for Triad. Does that match? Okay. So our number two slot on on deck is HNA. All right. Now I'm going to ask you for your number one selection for the mayor to enter into negotiations for design <coughs> of our transfer station. Rachel. Commissioner Dodd. Triad. Triad. Commissioner P. Griggs and Maloney. Commissioner James. H and A. H and A. Commissioner Phillips. Griggs and Maloney. Griggs and Maloney. Commissioner Piercy. Triad. Triad. Commissioner Johnson. Triad. Triad. Chairman Cush. Triad. Triad. I have four. four for Triad, one for HNA, and two for Griggs and Maloney. Does that match? All right. So. Triad is our number one slot. HNA is our number two slot. Any questions? Can I, can I say something? Uh, sir, Bishop. I just want to thank each of you for participating in this RFQ, um, and uh, we look forward to uh, to continuing communications with you as projects evolve. Uh, that would be on this scope. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and do, get a motion on this, yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to get a motion from the floor to go ahead and, and uh, allow the mayor to enter into negotiations uh, with uh, Triad. Second. So moved. And a second from Joshua James. All those in favor? Or should we be on the board for that in case? It, let's, get, let's be on the board since there's, well, there will be. We've already appropriated the money. We've we don't appropriated need, the money. We don't okay. need to be All on the board. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? All right, that motion carries. I want to add one thing. Again, thanks to the participants, but I in particular want to thank this committee. I don't think it's an accident that this is December 1st, literally 90 days from when I was sworn in and some of you were sworn in, and we undertook this monumental task seriously, and in 90 days I think what we've done is pretty remarkable. And I want to thank you, this committee, for just being assertive and understanding the complexity and the difficulty and just getting a job well done. I mean, it's just, uh, I'm impressed. So thank you very much. Thank you. We, we have momentum. Let's just uh, keep the ball rolling. So our next meeting would be Tuesday of next week is our regular public works and planning. Uh, so I will see you then. All right, dismissed. <laughs>